Hello everybody, my name is Khaled Siddiqui and in this video I'm going to be introducing and showing you a ultra capacitor. Ultra capacitors. Ultra capacitors are extremely capacious capacitors with capacities of hundreds and um, in this case actually thousands of uh, farads. Uh, so they are they very powerful and they deserve some respect because these things could cause fire, they could explode. Uh, if, they, if you subject excessive voltage to them, they could explode, they could get damaged. And if you short circuit them, they could, you know, easily uh, catch fire uh, or actually cause fire on something else if they don't catch fire themselves. So they need to be respected and treated accordingly. The super capacitors are used for sudden discharge of massive, massive amount of current, hundreds and hundreds of amps. If you need it suddenly, you need a super capacitor. For example, they use super capacitors and vehicle starter, starters, especially cold start and places that are like snow and the, you know, sub uh, zero temperatures where the batteries, the uh, lead acid battery, which has sulfuric acid inside, uh, is not performing very well, then you need supercapacitors, which will basically immediately give it a very, very powerful pulse and current for the starter to kick in and start the vehicle. Supercapacitors are also used in car amps, car amplifiers. A lot of car amplifiers are usually mounted in the trunk of the vehicle or in the back, far away from the battery. This causes substantial amount of heat on the cables running to the uh, car amp because when the base kicks in, that's when the amp requires massive amount of current, hundreds of amps, to depending on the amp, of course. I mean, if you have 2,000, 3,000 watt amp, then yeah, you need hundreds of amps to uh, you know, accommodate the base accordingly. Having that said, they're using capacitors in the back, which can compensate for the excessive current that ne is needed for the base to perform correctly. So the capacitor charges itself. It charges itself, and when the base kicks in, it discharges itself to accommodate the amp for excessive amperes, and then within seconds, less than a second, it recharges itself for the next bass. And the more bass in your music, the more capacity of capacitance you need uh, because uh, uh, you basically, if there's multiple basses one after another, the capacitor has to charge and discharge very rapidly. So it's good to have bigger capacitor banks, <coughs> bigger banks so that it can handle multiple uh, consecutive discharges and still not lose its voltage, okay? Capacitors, uh, um, these are electrolytic capacitors with polarization plus and minus, and these capacitors must be uh, subjected to the voltage that they're rated or less, not more than what they're rated for. If you need the, these capacitors for an application that's more than 2.7 volts, you have to mount these in series. For example, uh, series means one after another after another in series. Parallel means one side by side to other with all negatives connected together, all positive connected together like that. These come already pre-mounted, pre-soldered for car amp application. I will leave the link down below in the description so you can see uh, how these are welded together, uh, rated at 16 volts, which is good for a car amp, which is 12 volt, 13 volts. Now, when a capacitor voltage is higher, uh, you feed it lower voltage. It's not like a battery. The lower voltage is what it's going to store and give back. It's not going to increase the voltage uh, based on its rating. Let's say if this was a 100 volt capacitor and you feed it 5 volts, when you use that 5 volts, that's what it is. It's not going to jump to 100. Whatever level of voltage you feed it, that's the voltage it's going to give back when you need it. So the ones that they use for car amps, uh, they are actually rated 16.5 volts and they will let go 12 volts, 13 volts or whatever uh, they are 
fed. You know, usually the car battery or the car uh, alternator puts out between 12 to 14 volts, and that's what this will be, uh, the capacitor will be storing. Uh, these capacitors are, are not something for this particular model, which doesn't have a screw top. It's not something for someone to basically put them together themselves because this requires cold soldering, uh, welding, cold welding, which is sudden spark welding that they put a, a ring over it and then weld it co uh, very rapidly without overheating the capacitor. And uh, if you want to, if you have a project and you want to build a super capacitor of multiple small capacitors, uh, using multiple super capacitors to make an ultra capacitor, you need to buy the kind that has a screw and a nut on the top so you can put cables and mount it yourself. This uh, requires a uh, spark welding machine or other mechanical clamps. There, there are some mechanical clamps that hold like this very tight without having to heat this. You can't subject the capacitor to excessive heat. Uh, the formula for calculating the total capacitance if they're attached in series uh, is uh, uh, at the description below, which is the opposite of resistors. And resistors, if you have <coughs> resistors attached in series, is R1 plus R2 plus R3. You know, you add the total resistance, that's what the resistance is. Uh, you add each resistance to get the total resistance. But with capacitors, if they are mounted in series, the total uh, voltage will increase like a 2.7 volt capacitor this is a 2.7 with another 2.7 that becomes you know uh, 5.4 volt but the capacitance will drop in half why because 1 over capacitance total equals 1 over capacitor 1 plus 1 over capacitor 2 plus 1 over capacitor 3 and so on like i said i'm going to leave the uh, formula in the description so uh, having that said, I'm going to do a practical test so you can see uh, I'm going to feed this, you know, 1 to 2 volt, no more than that, because the capacitance is maximum is 2.7 volts. And we will see how much power it has to melt a cable. All right. The first thing I need to do, I'm going to uh, check the voltage to show you that this is completely discharged. This side is plus, as you can see, and there is a plus. And this side is negative. Also, you have plus and minus on the label. So let's check it and see that we have 0 0.002 volts, which is nothing. Basically, it's discharged. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to charge this capacitor. I'm going to charge this capacitor with a DC power supply, the voltage setting at 1 volt. So... This voltage, which is one volt, drops down as I put this because the current is set to zero. So I'm going to put the current higher and look, right now it's 0.8 volt at 2.6 amps. I'm gonna make the current even higher. So now I have 0.9 volt at five amps. Five amp is the maximum current that this DC power supply can handle. So this capacitor is right now being charged one volt at five amps. Now, if you leave this long enough, it, when, when, when it's fully charged, the, the voltage will stay at 1 volt, but the ampere will, start, will reach 0 because it doesn't have any more uh, capacitance in it to draw additional current from the power supply. So I have it clipped here, and I have these power supplies running in parallel. Uh, so I have 3.8 amps plus 2.6 amps um, at 2.5 volts combined, trying to charge this. And I'll give it another 10 minutes and see what happens. This uh, capacitor is so massive, it's so capacious, that right now it's been running for 5 minutes with dual power supply running at... Uh, nearly four amps continuously and it's not even 25% full okay so because my wire is too thin it re you require higher voltage to force enough current for this to warm up and heat up I increased the charge to 1.9 volts so watch the charged the charge 1.89 or 1.9 volts at this voltage look at the 
heat that this can generate. I mean, this is so such a small amount of voltage, but because the current is so high current, you watch and check out the heat. Okay, my cable is smoking. As you can see, it's melting. It's smoking and melting. Only at 1.5 volt, remember that. There. So that is how, th this was like through this cable, probably 50 or 60 amp was going to, to have this thing, you know, burn and smoke like that. Look how it burned out. The, the you know, shield completely burned out. That's how powerful these things are. And that's why these units need to be respected. And you have to wire it carefully. And I still have 1.8 volt. All the smoke came out of this. And all it dropped is 0.1 volt from 1.9 to 1.8 uh, volt. Uh, that's why uh, the, the capacity of this is uh, 3 watt hour. That means if you have something that's uh, 3 watts, it will run it for 1 hour. Here it says 3.84 watt hour. But yeah, that's 3.84 watt hour as it says there. Right there. 3.84 watt hour is the maximum, but the actual is 3.0 watt hour which uh, this actually runs off of. So, yeah, I hope you understood the mechanism and uh, usage of supercapacitors. Actually, this is ultra capacitor, not super capacitor. And uh, uh, yeah, so please make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.